I'm reefing with y'all like y'all reefing with me. Now let's jump to the video y'all came to see. Dark side. So I had got this tank about two months ago from one of my friends. He had decided to get out of the hobby, so he decided to give me this tank on consignment. He decided that he wanted to get out of the hobby to focus more on his freshwater fish. He does breeding of freshwater fish for his hobbies. So when he gave me this tank, it had a previous pass of blue clove polyps that he had dosed fenbenazole to get them to go away. And most of the tank was starting to get some green hair algae problems when I got it. But eventually the blue clove polyps started coming back on a couple different pieces of the rock. So I decided that I had to retreat this tank with fenbendazole. So I did. To me, this was a rescue mission for this tank because I wanted to try to save as many of the zoas and the other corals inside the tank that I could. I decided to measure up how much fenbendazole to dose into this tank. I got most of my measurements off of reef to reef on how much I should dose into the tank. But some of the results of dosing this tank have become catastrophic and caused a huge green hair algae problem, which I believe was from the blue cove olives dying along with other things that the fenbendazole may have killed in this tank. It appears to me now that most of the blue coal polyps are gone and that now all I am left is with the green hair algae problems. What I'm going to try to do is I'm going to try to step up my maintenance by doing weekly water changes, five gallons of water every week, which is 10% of the water volume of this tank. There's only 40 gallons inside of the tank along with about 10 gallons in the sump so it makes about 50 gallons and I am also going to clean off the return every day and clean off the overflow box here is one of the sponges that I clean out when I do the water change and it comes out with a lot of silt along with algae if you look in the bottom, this is silt in the bottom, along with detritus and other stuff that is probably helping grow this green hair algae. I am also going to turn down the lights. Um, I'm going to turn the uh, whites down to 15 that were once at 25. And I'm also going to go more a blue, bluer spectrum to stop some of the green hair algae growth. I am also going to do wet skimming instead of the skimming that I have been doing. I'm going to tune it in a little more wet so I can try to get this chato to grow more and also turn up the lights on the chato. As I was thinking about this, I was thinking about maybe my source water should be done too at the same time in order to re reduce the TDS that goes into this reef tank. Also, my friend stated to me that he did use some of his lab water that had zero TDS, but when I did a phosphate test on the lab water, it had very high phosphate. It had 0 0.0132 phosphate which is like at least 40 times higher than what you are supposed to have in order to have a tank that algae. I also believe that the phosphate is contributing to the green hair algae along with the die off of organic material as far as the blue clove polyps and other things that the finbendazole may have killed as far as pods or something else etc so right now everything in this tank seems to be doing okay seems like the green hair algae has stopped growing it is starting to die back a little bit some of these zoas inside of this tank 
are thriving. Some of them are doing well. My fish are doing well that are in this tank. I have four fish in here. A bangai, two clowns, a red scooter dragonette blenny, and also six line wrasse. So in this tank, it does still have a lot of green hair algae, but it seems like some of my cleanup crew is starting to destroy the algae. By the way, I had tried to add a lot of cleanup crew to this tank, but it seems as if they just eat the green haired algae that was partially fed by the fenbendazole. It seems like they die within a couple days. So I know a lot of my uh, subscribers are gonna say, hey, why aren't you adding a cleanup crew? Why aren't you doing this? Why aren't you lowering the phosphate and stuff like that? Um, I'm not looking to put GFO or any other kind of chemical products in this tank because I am trying to do this all natural and trying to get rid of the green hair algae now. Now that I had did the fenbendazole treatment to the blue clove polyps, now that I've got rid of the pest, comfortable that this tank will start thriving soon. So in this video, I have explained where I got this tank from, how I got this tank, what is living in this tank, and what kind of corals are in this tank. This is my 50 gallon system Zoa garden that I have in this tank. And I'm, I am happy that you guys had stopped by to see this tank and understand that this is gonna be a journey to get the problems that are with this tank in order for me to get them corrected, I will have to do a few things. One thing would be stepping up the maintenance and doing a lot of manual cleaning. I have in the past tried to pull out some of the green hair algae, but it seems like some of the zoas come up with the green hair algae, meaning that I am pulling them off the rock and possibly killing them. Some people may ask, hey, what is your phosphate? What are your phosphate levels? The phosphate levels in this tank is 17 parts per million, which comes out to about 0.063. Um, I am doing my best to try to reduce the phosphate levels in this tank also, but it is kind of hard when my RODI water has 0.063 phosphate coming out of the water, which I have just now changed my DI filter and also some of my other filters like my settlement and my carbon blocks in order to try to reduce some of the more of the phosphate. Anyways, guys, um, I will be releasing a update video on this tank next week. Hopefully things will look better. Hopefully everything will go just as planned. Thanks for stopping by, guys. Um, I'm going to get out of here and uh, I'll see you on the next video.